Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is just going to be a tutorial on uh, installing a new template into SOLIDWORKS and uh, a couple of tips and instructions on creating uh, drawings within SOLIDWORKS as well. So I'm going to include a link underneath this video uh, in YouTube that you can go to Dropbox and download this particular file right here. It's a SOLIDWORKS DRT file. Um, so what I have you do is on Dropbox uh, download that file to your and place it on your desktop just like this um, the next thing is to just open uh, the file manager and just leave it just in the background for now but you'll need it in the future so uh, just hold on to that <clears throat> uh, at this point I have you open up SOLIDWORKS and basically our intentions is to uh, set up this sort of template with the Carlton's School of Industrial Design logo on everything inside here and so that when you are to start a new drawing the template will show up in this, uh, this like template selection area right here so to properly install it what I'll have you do is make a new drawing And when you get to this, this selection area, click on this browse. And if you click up here on the uh, location area and copy it, like control C, copy it, and bring it back to, uh, or go back to your desktop where you'll have that uh, file manager open. Sorry. If you just want to click up where you copied from before and paste that file location and hit enter, it'll come up this uh, location that has all of the templates within SOLIDWORKS. And so what you can do now is select the file that you downloaded off of Dropbox, uh, either copy or cut, or even just drag and drop and place it in this area. Uh, I've already done that, so I won't do it right now. but. Uh, then, and that's basically it. That's all you need to do to set up that template. Um, yeah, so at this point, I'm going to start to show you guys how to create drawings, kind of like this. Um, so, the first thing you need is a part. So, this is uh, a leg from a robot. And there's a couple different ways to start a drawing. Um, and the easiest way to do is to actually go here up on the new tab and hit make drawing from part slash assembly. And what it'll do is it'll directly come in and only give you the option for a drawing like this. Click OK. And if you did the, uh, if you drop the template in the right area and you did everything like before, it'll show up usually in the very bottom. So I think by default this is selected, you'll only see these templates, but if you were to just deselect that and scroll to the very bottom, it should say 11 by 17 part. So click on that and open. What we'll do is it'll create a new drawing with this template, so it has it says project name, student name, client name, everything down here. And to start the drawing, what you do is go to View Layout up here in this tab. Um, you can either enter a model view or do the three standard views. Uh, but here I'm just going to show a model view. So now this is the model view menu, and you can select the part that you're going to draw. If you have multiple parts open, they'll be all in this area. But uh, select one for now, just by double clicking. Um, down here you can set to what uh, the first view will be. So right now it's set to be an isometric view because that's what I have open in the other side. So if you just click on the middle you'll get the center corner. Um, so you click on the sheet, it'll part will come up and then if you drag the mouse up you'll get another view, a projected view. And then from, it's basically all the views are linked to the central 
first view that you've placed. So we'll place the top, front, and side view, and also an isometric view of this. Um, so the isometric view is not linked at all to any of these views. So if I want to move this view, it stays put. And that's okay because in most cases you want to move it in different areas. <clears throat> at any point in time where you see these things like this that you don't actually want in your sheet, um, if you go to view up top here, uh, you can say hide all types or just hide origins because that's what's actually showing up here. And now they disappeared, so those are all gone. So especially if you're doing a JPEG at the very end to take uh, to hand in, you don't want those on your sheet. Um, yeah, so basically these are the model views. Um, you can see how when I move the uh, the views, uh, there's a little phantom line that shows up at that green line, and it actually just shows if there's alignment between the two views. So if you were to actually select this and right click, you can go to alignment. And if you were to hit break alignment, what it does is it removes that line, and now this view is free to move around. Um, sometimes that's helpful if you're trying to, uh, to to do multiple views in some areas, but uh, in this case, you probably don't have to. So to bring it back, you just um, right click on that align, uh, inline vertical by origin. It's going to ask which one you want. You click that, and now it's going to pick back again. <clears throat> So now we have these views. Um, if your part isn't the right size, like right now the scale, if you click on a part in this menu, if you scroll down, it says there's a scale menu right here, and right now it's currently saying it's 5 to 1. So what you could do is, right now it's, it's, it's default to using the sheet scale, and I can show you how to edit that in a sec, but if, if you don't want to, um, if you just want to change one view size, you can use custom scale, and you can specify what you want with any of these default ones, or if you scroll up to the top, there's a user defined hidden in here, and then you can actually type in what view, or what uh, scale you actually want. We're not going to leave it on sheet scale because this is the right this is the right scale for what I'm doing. Um, so to actually adjust this uh, sheet scale is if you right click and on on the sheet, not on, on the view, but on the sheet, and you go to properties. This is where you can adjust the sheet scale. And so if I were to write this 6 to 1, you'll see that these views uh, all got larger because they're linked to that. Uh, let me just revert that back. And at any point in time, too, you can also come in here and change the template if you wanted to. But it's usually not the case, but that's just how. Uh, another good thing to practice as well is when you're doing a lot of these these uh, drawings, you're working a lot of parts at once, it starts to load up your RAM and uh, you'll find that uh, SolidWorks could crash. Um, so if you saved often, uh, it'll minimize the chances and you, you won't lose a lot of work if it does crash. So uh, right now I'm going to save just to make sure that uh, I keep this. We'll leave it as like two for now. Uh, so right now we have your views and I'm going to show you how to start doing dimension. So if you come up to annotations, this is where the dimensioning tool works. You click on smart dimension, and you'll get the little smart dimension key around the mouse right here, as you see. And what you can do is start adding uh, dimensions to your parts. Um, just like how Jerry was talking about in, uh, in class, you want to find a fixed point, a relative point, in order to measure off of, called the datum point. So what I'll do is I'll just start throwing a couple uh, dimensions on here so that just so you can see a couple uh, instances of how you can measure things. So right now, um, if I were to select, select this, it, uh, it measures to the middle of, uh, of the arc instead of the top. I'm not sure if it'll work with this part, but if you actually select, if you hold shift and then select the curve, yeah, it's not working this part because it's not an exact circle. But if you were to, if it were to be a, a select, actually, I think this one's okay. We'll try this. Oh, I just hit the letter S right there, which is what that little menu came up. It's a, like a shortcut menu. So if I were to hold down Shift and dimension this, it grabs the outer edge instead of the uh, 
the, the point in the middle of the centroid so that you get the dimension from the outside here instead of the uh, instead of the middle or it would end up right about here. So that's just, that's just if you're trying to measure circles and you're trying to measure to the outside. Because sometimes it is important to be able to measure to the, where the center is and sometimes it's important to measure to the outside for like maybe overall dimensioning and stuff. Um, that's it, it's a pretty it's a pretty easy tool and you want to make sure that you you are measuring the correct things and I could start to throw little dimensions in like this but they're, they're relatively not important like to throw like this angle like that's something that's that's not very important but you want to it's it's up to your discretion to be able to put in the correct amount of uh, dimensioning to um, make sure that the part can be understood by someone and if you were to put too many dimensions it becomes overwhelming and sometimes confusing for someone. So uh, basically go through and dimension your parts so that uh, you get to a state that looks a little bit like a part. Uh, it looks like this, a little bit like this, so you have an understanding of what the um, actual dimensions of the entire part are. So here are opal dimensions right here. So it's the width total length and unfortunately I wasn't able to get the whole height here but it's pretty, pretty close. You understand that um, minimal people that actually are manufacturing this can do math so they'll, they'll well see that that's 11.13 plus 1.49 to get the total overall height. Um, another thing I did in this is I actually added a section view so I can go back to the other one and show how to do that quickly as well. Um, so if you can see over in the view layout, it's a section option. And if you go over a, a view, it'll turn all pink and there'll be a little line that'll go and it'll snap to a whole bunch of different points. So usually, typically you're going to be doing a section through the middle. So you click and then you move either to the right, either to the right or to the left, it'll, it'll flip. And that is the section, the section of this piece right here through that line. Um, with this kind of an irrelevant image, but just to show how you can actually use that tool, it's very simple. Uh, another way you can use that tool is actually uh, uh, sketching a line, like a center line first here. Uh, so let's just go somewhere like this on an angle. And this is where it sometimes helps is if you're trying to do a, a view that's a little bit difficult to do with this tool. Because it's a very just elementary tool, doesn't really do much. Uh, okay, so never mind this isn't like that. But that's how you would do it as well. So you can actually draw a line and then select a selection tool, and it uh, it'll do the same. But in most cases, you're going to be using just the straight selection tool. Um, I think one more thing I can do, or from two more things, is uh, right next to the section you have the detail view, and what it allows you to do is uh, zoom in on a specific point on a part. Uh, so what's going to ask you to do first is draw a circle. So you can zoom in and uh, drag the mouse to click a specific view and see how the, this detailed uh, view pump comes up. And the view is actually specified its scale because it, it's it's scaled up in order to show the detail. And so here you as well, like just like in the other menus, is that you can go down to scale and you can specify what you want. So I can make it really big if I need to or something like that. But that's basically how you would add a detailed view. Um, and if you were to click on just the annotation here, you can actually um, adjust a couple different things. So right now there's a full circle, and it doesn't really look all that great, but you can add a broken line that puts a letter inside. Uh, and then if you're to grab the middle, you can move it around a little bit, put it in different areas. And as you do that, it'll follow the view so it knows exactly what you're doing every time. Um, this is starting to get a little bit cluttered, so I'll go to the other one and show you quickly, because I only have a few seconds left. Uh, in order to change your name and stuff, which is going to be important so you can, uh, we'll know who's, who's and stuff, yeah, if you come down to the uh, title block here, and you just double, double click, the blue light highlights will come up, and if you click again, you'll be able to delete and uh, put all, all the information that you need to in here. Don't worry about the tolerances and material anything like that yet, but please put the date, client, uh, yourself, your own name, and then the title of your, um, of your part. 